And welcome, welcome to worship with us. I'm Pastor Connie Markle of West Branch United Methodist Church, and we are happy you are joining us today. May you be blessed. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Oh God, you are an awesome God. We thank you for calling us to be in worship today. Thank you for calling us to follow you, to be your disciples. Help us not be afraid, but help us to listen to your voice. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so we can follow you faithfully every step of the way. In your name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Life-giving God, you have called us to the fountain of new life, new vision, new hope, new fellowship with you and with one another. We come rejoicing, you kept your promise. Faithful God, you promise never to leave or forsake us. We come in victory, you kept your promise. All-powerful, sustaining God, you promise to set us free from the law of sin and death. We come with hearts of thanksgiving, and our minds are stayed on you because you kept your promise. join me in our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. A common phrase for the life of me inspired this song about 40 years ago. For the life of me, I cannot understand Why I'm here and now, with this world at hand For the life of me For the life of you, can you understand The love and power it took Make the sea and land For the life of you For the life of us We should wonder why We are trusted with All the earth and sky For the life of us For the life of me, I will sing with praise To the source that gives every wondrous day For the life of me
For the life of us, we should wonder why we are trusted with all the earth and sky. For the life of us. For the life of me, I will sing with praise to the source that gives every wondrous day. For the life of me. Forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, 
in truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture for today is from Romans 8, verses 1 through 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done with the law, weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you... Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the spirit that dwells in you. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Oh God, we thank you so much for your word because it's your living word. May it speak to each of us just what we need this day, this moment. Thank you for your love and mercy and grace. In your name we pray, amen. How is your relationship with God? How is your relationship with God? Is it doing better during the coronavirus isolation or does it need help? You might say, well, why do I ask that question? Because our relationship with God is very important. Our relationship with God spills over into all other relationships. A question we might ask ourselves, how do I find God in this COVID-19 world? And where do I find God in this COVID-19 world? We may find it in different places, in different moments. I find God in nature, going for a walk, and seeing God's beautiful world. I find God in a song, in the scripture, sometimes in a visit or a phone call. Remember that God is here. God loves you and cares for you. Keep looking for God. Sometimes we're tempted to worry, aren't we? Sometimes we're tempted to worry. There are many things that we could worry about. But as a believer in Christ, we have new life in Christ. God wants us to set our mind on Christ because Jesus wants to give us peace when we set our mind on him. One time a friend was going through a tough time and she said, well, I'm not going to worry. God's got this. And so I remind myself of that sometimes when I'm tempted to worry, to say, God's got this. I'd like to give you a little background of Romans. Apostle Paul wrote this book to the believers in Rome. He wanted to go see them, but he had a different journey to take. And he couldn't wait to meet these believers in Rome. They were Jews and Gentiles. They were brothers and sisters in Christ. He never met them, but he wanted to to meet them because he loved them. So in this letter he sends to introduce himself and to spell out the theology of what it means in our faith. He wanted to remind them that salvation is only the beginning of a life in Christ. In Romans 1 through 11, he tells them what to believe and tells us, Romans 1 through 11, what to believe, and then Romans 12 to 16, how to behave. So how to put that to practice, how to behave. If we study Romans carefully, we we are greatly helped by these foundations and knowing what to believe and how to live. Paul tells people more about the good news, that salvation is, able, is open to all, available to all, regardless of a person's heritage, their sin, or their identity. God's salvation is able to all, available to all people. And we are saved by grace. Grace is a gift, undeserved, a gift from God through faith, which is complete trust in Christ and his finished work. We can stand before God justified, which means just as if we never sinned. So we don't have to be afraid to stand before God because we are justified and forgiven, not guilty. Jew or Gentile, it doesn't matter. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
Paul talks about freedom. That theme has been going on for a while in our Sundays, hasn't it? Freedom. Freedom that comes from being saved or freedom from salvation. Freedom from the power of sin. We'll still be tempted as Christians, but we have freedom from the power of sin. Freedom from the domination of the law. Well, the law was good, wasn't it? How could the law be bad? God gave Moses the law. It was good. It was for them to know the right way to live, how to make decisions. But the only thing is the law could not save them. Only Jesus could do that. In Romans 8, we hear a lot about the Holy Spirit. Our lives are changed and we are transformed when we give our lives to the Holy Spirit. When we give control to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> we have freedom to become like Christ and discern God's limitless love. Romans 8, 1 and 2 says, Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life sent me free from the law of sin and death. Do you hear that? No condemnation. Not guilty. Amen. That's good news, isn't it? We have hope beyond the grave. And Jesus paid the price for our sins. He paid the ultimate price, a price we could not pay, a debt we could, that we owed, but we couldn't pay it. So we could be forgiven. God says, no condemnation. You're not guilty. The other night on America's Got Talent, a guy named Archie Williams came on and told his story. When he was a young man, he was arrested for something he did not do. He was found guilty for something he did not do. He was sentenced to life in prison for something he did not do. And he said when he was sentenced and put in prison, he says this, I had a choice to be strong or weak. He had a choice to be strong or weak. End of quote. He said last year a group took up his case. It was back in court. They were ordered to rerun the, foot, the fingerprints. And they found out the fingerprints were not his. They were someone else's. Archie was not guilty. He was free after 37 long years. How did he keep his sanity in prison for 37 years? How did falsely accused affect his faith and his relationship with God? He said, I prayed and I kept singing. I prayed and I kept singing. That strengthened his faith. Archie was asked, how did you get through this? And Archie said, and I quote, freedom is of the mind. I went to prison, but I never let my mind go to prison. When you know you're faced with a dark time, what I would do is pray and sing, and that's how I got peace. End of quote. So Archie had a faith, didn't he? A faith in God that was strong. No matter going through the darkest time for 37 long years, being blamed, being in prison for something he didn't do. But God helped him through that and gave him peace. Then the question was asked, how does it feel to be out? How does it feel to be vindicated? And Archie said, it's a feeling I'm still trying to grab and digest. That freedom that I have right now. I would watch America's Got Talent and visualize myself here and thank God. It's my change of a lifetime. Well then, after that, he sang a song, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. The whole place was quiet, and he has a soft voice, but the whole crowd listened to every word he sang, and he received a standing ovation and lots of love. Even Simon complimented on his good voice. The crowd started chanting, Archie, Archie, Archie. And Archie said, it was DNA that freed me. But he believes in Jesus that helped this happen. So I ask you today, who has freed you? Do you know that Jesus has freed you? If not, you can ask him for forgiveness of your sins because he's died and freed you. Jesus was a sin offering for us. And we can give our lives to him and we'll be free. We have a choice to live in sinful nature or let Jesus control us. Romans 8 talks about life through the Spirit because the Spirit frees us too. <clears throat> Jesus says you are free. Our sins, our past and present and future have been dealt with by Jesus. We can live the rest of our lives in light of that freedom from condemnation. That helps us have joy in our hearts and in our souls every day because it's all taken care of. What does it mean to set our minds on things above instead of earthly things? 
Romans 1.5 says those who live in the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The Holy Spirit transforms our lives and helps us to focus on higher things. The mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. And then verses 9 through 11 tells us about our assurance of the future. You are controlled by the Spirit. The Spirit of God lives in you. Your body is dead because of sin, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is in you, you too will be raised from the dead by the Spirit who lives in you. So those are a lot of fabulous promises to hang on to, to hold on to our hearts. What does life look like for those who are in Christ Jesus? Well, Jesus' amazing love has set us free. We are forgiven. Jesus is our pain taker, our chain breaker. Jesus frees us from sin and the consequences of sins. He takes those chains off our hearts to give us freedom. <clears throat> Colossians 3 tells us in verse 8, to get rid of certain things like anger and rage and malice and slander and filthy language. To get rid of that and to put on things of Christ, compassion and kindness, humility and gentleness and patience. And to forgive as we have been forgiven and to live in joy and peace. What does it mean to set our minds on earthly things? Well, for a lot of our time during the day, a lot of our lives are set on earthly things, aren't they? Our day-to-day -day lives, our families, our friends, our jobs, our homes, our church, responsibilities that we have, having fun, going on vacations. Well, someone who has their mindset on earthly things disregards God and God's word. They're very selfish and focused on themselves. So Romans 8, 5 says, those who live according to the sinful nature have their mindset on what the sinful nature desires. They're controlled by the sinful nature and are not pleasing God, are not capable to please God. So what does life look like for those controlled by the flesh? Well, how do we feel when we let ourselves have anything we want, do anything we want, when we just focus on ourselves? It's pretty miserable, isn't it? Pretty miserable way to live. We can't please God, but there's good news that we can change. God can change our heart, God can change our mindset, which will change our behavior. Colossians 3, 1 through 3, talks about rules for holy living. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So there is an invitation to you and to all people, an invitation to all people, set your heart and mind on Christ today. There are lots of blessings focusing our heart and mind on Christ and being controlled by the Holy Spirit. We have assurance of our salvation. We have peace that passes all understanding. We have hope and joy and love. We are blessed with grace-filled moments. We don't expect them, but there are moments that God just shows grace to us. We cherish those moments. Like baseball players or softball players, as they review what they've learned and practice, they get better and stronger. And as we re review what we have learned, our faith is strengthened. Our relationship with God is renewed and strengthened as well. And our relationship with others will be renewed and strengthened too. And we will be blessed and blessed and blessed again. We'll be closer to God. We'll be more in love with God. We will have victory in Jesus. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for your word. And even challenging us to set our minds on you. Forgive us, Lord, when we set our minds on things of this earth. But you understand our day-to-day -day lives. And just help us to make time for you a priority in our lives. To focus on you. And as we do, you call us to serve you. And we're thankful that we can serve you in whatever way you call us to do. I ask you to bless each one. Bless us with these blessings and these promises. Continue to use us and lead us. In your name we pray. Amen. But well, this time in our service, we have joys. We are blessed with the gift of today. And as you're probably noticing, we're doing our service in a different new way. 
new way of recording our service, so thank you to all of you who are participating and helping and making this happen. Are there those we should keep in our prayers today? Well, let us pray. Oh God, you are an awesome God, and we thank you for being our God. Thank you for loving us so much, God, that you sent Jesus to our world. And Jesus, we thank you for coming to our world, to live among us, to teach us, and to die for us. Thank you for giving your life for us so our sins can be forgiven. Thank you for each one who has become a Christian, and I pray for those that haven't become a Christian yet, that they will turn to you and ask you to forgive their sins and start this new life so they don't have to be so worried so they can find your peace and the promises. Thank you, God, for forgiving us and freeing us from consequences of sin. Help us to trust you every day of our lives. I thank you, Lord, for answers to prayer. I thank you, Lord, for each person that has a part of this service. So we can continue to worship you together, even though we can't worship you together in this building. But wherever we are, you draw us together and unite us. Thank you, God for all the blessings you give this church. We pray for those who need your touch, for each of those in care centers or at home who need your touch, for all those who are grieving lost loved ones and friends, for those who are ill, for those who are suffering in whatever way, for those who are lonely. And God, as we gather together, we pray for peace in our hearts, in our families, in our homes, in our world. God, we can get so distracted with the bad news that's going on. Help us to see the good news that you give us. Help us to see the joy that you give us and the love that you give us. I ask you to bless our church, our community, and our world. Unite us together to serve you. And thank you, God, for giving us gifts to serve you with. And thank you for opportunities that come our way, even in this time, to serve you, to encourage others, and to give you the glory. Now let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh,
I want to thank you for your continued support and giving to our church. We appreciate your faithfulness and dedication and commitment to your pledges, your tithes, and offerings. May God bless you. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of the universe, we worship you. We long to set our minds on the Holy Spirit and to live with Christ within. As we dedicate our gifts this morning, may it help us to live more in tune with the Spirit and to use our resources in a way that reflects Christ is Lord in our lives. In his holy name we pray. Amen. In the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice Tell the same old lies If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life Chain breaker. If you need freedom, 
chain breaker. Please receive the blessing. Remember that God is the chain breaker. As you keep climbing this mountain of faith, going from salvation to sanctification, God will lead you in many places of service. You'll be filled with the Holy Spirit to serve God's people and all people. May God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit fill you and keep filling you and keep blessing you day by day. And remember, God's got this. Amen. Thank you.